In this three steps to sketch, we'll use the advanced sine graph method to get a graph of y equals negative sine of x plus 3 pi over 4. Um, so we can see that we have that x plus 3 pi over 4. We know that this has a phase shift. Um, b is 1, so we don't need to factor it out, um, but we know we want to use the advanced method for this one um, to take care of that shift. So let's jump in. Here is our advanced template and our equation and grid. And as a reminder, the general form for shifted sine equations is y equals a sine of b x minus c plus d. And that'll just help us as we break down the essentials in step one. So let's jump into that. Um, we will start with finding the information about the base graph. So we need to identify A, and we see that there's an understood one in front of sine, um, negative one specifically. So we'll say A is negative one. Take the absolute value of that. That'll tell you your amplitude. So the amplitude of this graph is the same as the parent graph, Y equals sine X, it's just one. Um, it also tells us that we have a reflected base pattern. So I like to go ahead and put a star next to step two, which should trigger, oh, hey, here's my reminder. I need to do the reflected base pattern. So it's just good. Make yourself a note, whatever works for you. All right, then B, we see that there's an understood one in front of the X. So B is one. B tells us how many cycles we have between zero and two pi. So we have one cycle. Um, it also helps us find the period. And for sine, you calculate that using 2 pi divided by b. So 2 pi divided by 1, our period is 2 pi. And remember, period is just the length of a horizontal cycle. All right, now we can choose our scale labels. And we choose the horizontal scale labels very intentionally. We take our period and we divide by 4. And we do this so that our four key points in the base pattern in the next step will align with our horizontal tick marks and how we have them labeled. Um, so it just makes for a nice, neat graph. Okay, so 2 pi over 4, we'll be counting by pi over 2 for our horizontal tick marks. And for our vertical tick marks, we can usually use 1, or you could use whatever A is if you felt like it. Um, I usually like to use 1. All right, so now let's go ahead and label our axes. So starting with the horizontal axis, we'll count by pi over 2. So we start with 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, which reduces to pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which reduces to 2 pi, and 5 pi over 2. So we'll do the same thing on the negative part of the axis, of course, just with negative signs. All right, and then we'll move on to the vertical axis, and we will count by ones. Easy enough. All right. So we've got a really good setup here. This all has been working toward our base pattern. Um, let's make sure before we move on to graphing that we identify our shifts. So looking, we know that our phase shift is C over B and it's almost staring at us from the equation. The one thing you have to notice here is you have X plus three pi over four. Okay, so in the template equation, we have minus. So we know that this three pi over four is actually a hidden negative, if you wanna see it written out. So this is just some scratch work. It's actually like X minus negative three pi over four, and that's how it turns into a, a positive there. So all that to say, our C over B is going to be negative three pi over four. Our graph is shifting left, okay? The left is just an extra note. So you can write negative three pi over four, you can write move left three pi over four, whatever helps you. All right, and then of course we see there is no D term out there, so you can put zero or a dash or whatever you'd like. Okay, so we'll use those shifts and or that shift in step three. All right, so now we are ready for step two, plot the base pattern of sine. And it's here where I'm really glad that I put a star um, so that I could remember, hey, there was a negative in front of my sign. And that tells me that this will be a reflected sign pattern. So our base pattern will be 
zero, minimum, zero, maximum. All right, so plot this lightly. Remember, this is our base graph. This is not our final shifted graph. Um, so you can use a different color or just mark it very lightly. But we know we start at the origin for the base graph. And so we have zero, minimum, because it's flipped. And just look to A, A will help you with that. So we know our point will happen in line with pi over two, our first horizontal tick mark, and its Y coordinate will be A, so negative one. And that's another way to ensure, okay, yes, our graph is reflected. We have a minimum going on here. All right, then we have another x-intercept at the next tick mark. You'll have your maximum at three pi over two, which is your third horizontal tick mark. And the Y coordinate is just the opposite value of A. So we have our maximum there. All right, and then we would have a first point to repeat another cycle at 2 pi. And I just like to put that there to close out the graph um, when I start to sketch it later on. All right, so now we're ready for step three. So I'm going to switch colors. And this is going to be one cycle of our final shifted graph. So in step three, we shift, sketch, and repeat. So we know our shift is moving left three pi over four. Okay, so pi over four we know is gonna be right here. It's a half grid unit horizontally. So if we're moving three pi over four, that's one and a half grid units. Okay, another thing that would be helpful is saying here's negative pi over four, negative two pi over four, negative three pi over four. So if you wanna label that negative three pi over four, you can. Okay, I'm going to keep it off just so we have a cleaner graph. All right, so let's move each of these points. Left, one and a half grid units, which is equal to three pi over four. So left three pi over four, left three pi over four, left three pi over four, and left three pi over four. So we will sketch that graph in. Here's our sine curve, great. And then let's repeat this. And the great thing now is once you have one cycle of this, you are literally just repeating this pattern. And so um, it becomes a little bit nicer in terms of, okay, you're just replicating. It's like a stamp. You are just picking it up, stamping it down, picking it up four more units down, stamping it down. All right, so I'm going to continue the pattern in the positive direction first. So we see that these are happening in the middle of our labeled tick marks. If we needed to label them, we could, but I think what we have works well. So we have, of course, our zero. Here's our minimum. Here's another zero. We'd have another maximum up here if you wanted to draw that. So you have your graph looking like this. Okay, and then you could continue the pattern in the other direction as well. So maximum, zero, minimum, Another zero would happen out there. All right, so this is what you have. That is almost three cycles of our graph, y equals negative sine of x plus three pi over four. I do think it's interesting to look, if you go back to b and knowing that that tells you how many cycles between zero and two pi, with this graph, it's kind of interesting. Look between zero and two pi here. So we have a kind of weird cycle, a weird starting point, but you can still tell that one complete cycle happens between zero and two pi. It's just not how we're used to seeing them. Sometimes we count from uh, x-intercept to x-intercept or maximum to maximum or minimum to minimum. And this one's from that point that's like a little bit above the minimum um, to, the same, to the same or similar point. Um, but still nice to see how that can look sometimes. All right, so this was the advanced three steps to sketch method for sign graphs. Um, in the video description, you'll find links to a lot more examples for graphing sign, um, as well as some of the other trig functions as well. So I hope this helped. Good luck, and thanks for watching.